Welcome back, everyone. This is all so new to all of us, and we're doing our absolute best to get everyone back as soon as we can and as safe as we can. We have great plans in store for you to make this transition as smooth as possible. And I personally want to thank our very own ATHS student, Lauren McNaught, for the tremendous effort she put forth in creating this amazing video. Our top priority is keeping everyone protected while being able to learn together. In this video, we're going to explain the new protocols and safety tips that we must follow to ensure the switch back to school is safe, respectful, educational, and fun. Please enjoy the day. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. We're so anxious to have you back in our buildings. I know it's been a really difficult six, seven months of um, not knowing um, something new, a whole new adventure of education. But I can tell you that we have um, spent a tremendous amount of time over the last several months um, working through many of the difficulties that I know staff, parents, and students are concerned about. I just want you to know that we want you to re-enter both to our schools and to our extracurriculars as best as you can. During the time on this video, you will get to see some instructions because we all know that this could be a very difficult time walking back into a school building and we want to make sure you know that we are here for all of you, staff, students, and parents all the time. I don't want you to hesitate if you have any questions or concerns. You can certainly reach out to me or you can reach out to your specific building. Again, I'm really excited as we all are to have you come back to our schools and we welcome the staff, the students and the parents with open arms and we're here for any concerns or questions that you may have. Thank you Dr. Lerner and Ms. Sheridan. Hey everybody, I'm Laura McNaught, a student here at Bergen Tech. So as Dr. Lerner and Ms. Sheridan have both emphasized, school is going to be very different from what we're used to. You're probably wondering what this is going to look like. While East Campus has been restructured to meet and exceed the new safety guidelines regarding COVID-19 while still maintaining a productive working environment for all of our students. Hallways, cafeterias, classrooms, entrances, etc. have all been remodeled to ensure the safety of our students by both allowing social distancing and keeping one-way traffic. It's all going to be new to everyone, as it has been, but as long as we execute the necessary actions, this will be over in due course and we'll be back to a more familiar schooling. Till then, let's just adjust to our new normal. With the new designs in our cafeterias, classrooms, hallways, etc., there are going to be new protocols put in place, along with masks being worn at all times, well, except during eating. Arrival, dismissal, and class switching in between periods are all going to be staggered to limit the amount of students in the same space at a time. We'll also have daily screenings upon entry. So in the morning, students will line up outside their building while socially distancing and have their temperatures taken using contactless thermometer scanners. Students with fevers or any suspected symptoms will immediately be isolated and prepared to be sent home. Also upon entry, students will have to have a self-assessment document filled out on PowerSchool. Yes, every day, just to keep track of the things that you've done or the people you've been in contact with. It's just to lower the risk of transmission if there is any virus present among us. We'll also begin to integrate sanitizing and disinfecting in between periods into our schedules. Bathrooms will only allow one person in at a time. With that, washing stations and hand sanitizer dispensers are going to be everywhere. You'll always have the opportunity to quickly clean your hands if need be. Understandably, with all of this, it can be stressful. As a student, this is an experience that we've never had before. But thankfully, we have the support from our administration, guidance counselors, principals, teachers, etc., to guide us through these changes. Their priority is to ensure that we can continue to learn in a safe, productive, and friendly environment. Now, while understanding the new changes that are going to be put in place is important, it's also vital to learn about the virus itself and what to look for. Here now with us is Dr. Kevin McNaught to speak with us about COVID-19. Hi, Bergen Tech. I am Dr. Kevin McNaught, and I'm here to talk to you about the symptoms of COVID-19. Over the past 10 to 11 months, we have learned a great deal about the illness and have a pretty good understanding of how the symptoms develop and how they appear in different individuals. COVID-19 is classified as a respiratory illness, which means that the coronavirus primarily attacks the respiratory system. However, the virus also impacts on other parts of the body, leading to a wide variety of symptoms. 
So let's take a look at some of the symptoms of COVID-19. Difficulty breathing or shortness of breath. Individuals who develop COVID-19 often describe this feeling as if someone is sitting on their chest or there is pressure on their chest making it extremely difficult to inhale and or exhale. Fever and or chills. Individuals with COVID-19 often develop a high fever which range from 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit to higher temperatures. What is interesting about fever or chills is that they can vary throughout the course of the day and night such that there are times when the fever will subside and then there are times when the fever will increase to very high levels. And that is why it is going to be important for us to be able to take temperatures to see if people have COVID-19 symptoms. Coughing, sneezing, congestion, a runny nose, uh, these are features that are often seen um, in other respiratory illnesses and they certainly do occur in COVID-19 patients. Uh, individuals with COVID-19 also develop a sore throat, loss of taste, and loss of smell. And in fact, uh, these symptoms often occur very early in the disease and so they can serve as a sign of more profound symptoms that will eventually develop in people who have COVID-19. Body aches and pain, that can be very discomforting. Fatigue, restlessness are also symptoms. In addition, some individuals also develop very severe headaches that can be profoundly disabling. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. Although these symptoms are major features of COVID-19, there are others, and in the months ahead, we are likely to learn more about the presentation of COVID-19 in people who have the illness. There are several important things to note. These symptoms are not unique to COVID-19 as they occur in other illnesses, such as the flu and the common cold. This is why it is often important to have a test to confirm the presence of the virus within the nasal passages of people to make a definitive determination. Second, the vast majority, approximately 80% of people who get the virus will not show symptoms or will only have very mild and inconsequential symptoms. Third, not all symptoms occur in every individual. Each person will develop a different group or a different subset of these symptoms. The fourth, the order in which these symptoms develop and how long they last will vary from person to person. And this will make it extremely difficult to predict how long or how severe the illness will be in different individuals. Fifth and finally, most people who get COVID-19 will recover. Only a very small percentage of people will get very ill and unfortunately will die from the disease. If you exhibit any of these symptoms, you should talk to your parents, a school nurse or your doctor so that they can take a closer look to see what is going on. In most cases, it will not be COVID-19, but something else perhaps a cold or a flu, and this is quite likely, especially during this time of the year. So there is no need to panic or feel scared. Just be aware and continue to exercise social distancing, wash your hands frequently, and follow all the guidelines set forth by your school and by the CDC to help protect yourself and others from the possibility of developing COVID-19. So thank you for listening. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and have a wonderful school year. Coming up now are some tips from your fellow classmates on how to help protect yourself from coronavirus. Hi, Bergen Tech. As we move into the new school year, we're gonna have to adapt to a new normal. The following are some very important tips on how to stay safe. Always social distance. Maintain at least six feet between you and others. There are stickers on the floors if you're unsure of how far to stay apart. You can also approximate six feet, which is about two arms length. Keep clean hands. When you wash your hands with regular soap and water, wash for at least 20 seconds or sing happy birthday twice. If you don't have access to a bathroom or washing station, just use hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose, and mouth. Do not remove your mask or face covering besides eating time. Also, be careful not to touch the inside of your mask to avoid contamination. Follow authoritative guidelines such as the CDC, WHO, NIOSH, FDA, etc. Contact trace. Try to remember things that you touched or people you've been in contact with. It's helpful in the event of a suspected case. Stay clear of any crowded areas. It's crucial to social distance at all times. If you suspect something, say something. Let's say you see one of your peers coughing, sneezing, or showing any symptoms Dr. McNock talked about. You must confidentially report it immediately. Clean and disinfect after use of anything in school. There are supplies all around us. 
so be sure to use them generously. Make sure to adhere to the regulations regarding the restroom. Yeah. Only one person is allowed in there at once. If you aren't feeling well, say something. Even if you doubt you are sick, you never know. So tell an authoritative individual immediately. Do not share anything with others. This includes school supplies, food, clothes, etc. Regularly check your student information card on PowerSchool to make sure it's always updated. Remember that at any time you are allowed to switch from in-person learning to remote. If you feel safer at home, you always have that option. Happy schooling, stay safe. Thank you. Hi, I hope that you and your families are well. I'd like to welcome our returning students back to campus and also welcome the class of 2024 to BCA. Despite all the challenges that we're faced with, we continue to work together as a school community to support one another. I can tell you with confidence that our teachers and staff miss you and we are looking forward to your return to school. We are working hard to provide a hybrid model for you that will include our best efforts to return to normal and provide electives, research, clubs, and hopefully some virtual assemblies as well. I thank you and your families for your continued dedication to learning as we work through this situation together. Best wishes to each and every one of you on a wonderful school year. Hello, ATHS. I'm very excited to be able to welcome you back to Enyer Hall for the 2021 school year. While you're away, faculty and staff have been hard at work preparing for your return. I'd like to begin by thanking Ms. Pierce, Ms. Sloman, the guidance department, the custodial staff, and everyone else who took on the monumental task of reopening schools during this pandemic. When you arrive at Enyer Hall, you'll find the ATHS looks a little different than when you left. And while all of these changes are necessary to provide for your safe return, they're only one piece of the equation. You must also do your part to ensure your safety and the safety of everyone else in the school community. This means wearing a mask at all times during the school day, with the exception of while eating lunch. Maintaining six feet of separation from other students and faculty as you move through the hallways and within the classrooms. Not sharing school materials such as books, calculators, and pencils. Limiting the items you bring with you to school and also bringing your items with you to each class. Reporting to an adult and staying home if you feel sick. The first few days of school, the teachers and I will review each of these changes with you. And of course, if you have any questions, please just reach out to your guidance counselors. These are unprecedented times, but we will get through this, as we always do, by working together as a school community. For now, I can't wait to see all of you back at ATHS. Hi, I'm Jeremy Wertheim, principal of Bergen County Technical High School Paramus Campus. Here at Bergen Tech Paramus, we've put a great deal of thought and preparation into keeping students safe while they are working in their technical areas. One of the unique characteristics of our school is the hands-on approach to career in technical education. With students returning to the automotive technology shop, cosmetology salon, culinary kitchen, and all other trade-related classrooms, we have set specific guidelines for education in these unique locations. We've done so by investigating how the Department of Health has regulated these industries in the pandemic. The regulations gave rise to our PPE plus one plan for technical education. This provides instructors and students at least one PPE layer of protection above the standard for industry employees. We have also invested in technology like GoPro cameras and chest mounts to help instructors demonstrate to students in their classroom and online while maintaining social distance. In addition to our upgrade in safety equipment and instructional technology, this is an opportune time to provide students with industry standard certification in safety procedures and protocols. All of our trade instructors are working diligently to align safety measures for in-person return with certification programs that will both credential the students and provide meaningful instruction on industry safety during the pandemic. We're excited to add to the hundreds of OSHA compliant certified students, and we can't wait to see our students get back to work. Bergen Tech students, how are you? It's Mr. Tankard. Um, miss all of you. Can't wait for you to come back. Um, just want to send this message to you and just let you know we're working really hard. We want you to come back. We want you to be safe. Um, when you're going to come back, it's going to be different, but this is temporary. We're going to do what we need to do now to make sure that we can educate you. We're doing everything that we can. What I'm going to ask you is we've done our part. We're doing our part. I need you to step up. I need you and your colleagues and your friends 
to mask up, to do what you need to do, to wash your hands, to socially distance, to do all of the things that are really difficult right now that you don't want to do. The sooner you do that, the more normal life will become. I understand that you did not ask for this situation. None of us did. None of us deserve this. Where we are today is where we are. And we have to make the best with what we have. But you don't need to sacrifice. You need to look after your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors. I need you to step up. The sooner you step up, the sooner life will get back to normal. And hopefully if we can learn that from this, and we can learn to rely on each other, act in a manner that we care about each other, have compassion and empathy for one another, maybe this experience will not have been in vain. So we miss you, we want to see you, please do your part. Thank you. I'd like to thank you all for watching and please pay strict attention to the things that have been put into this video a lot of time and effort and I can't stress that enough from Lauren and our building admin and our students that have given their time from each of the campuses building level secretaries custodians nurses I can go on and on support staff our counseling department all the people here in Central and Dr. Lerner would really want to make sure that what, that you took this video seriously and you took time to listen to it, to watch it again. And if you have any questions, please, as I said to you, feel free to call us or email us. Again, welcome back. I couldn't be more excited to see you on October 19th.